Hi, this is the man from Modesto. This is How to Pray, lesson number eight. And this one is about uh, how the devil will attempt to steal what you received, to alter it, to mix in lies with the truth, and to quench it so that it doesn't affect your living at all. So I'm going to give, read some scriptures, I'm going to go over it, and I'm going to give an example uh, at the end. We're talking here from Matthew chapter 13. Uh, verses 3 through 8, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the way, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some 60-fold and some 30-fold. So we're seeing some different kind of results here. You're praying and you receive a word from God. You receive a dream vision from God. Uh, you go to a, a Holy Spirit-filled church and the pastor just lays down some solid truth there. And what happens next is the devil's going to try to destroy that. <coughs> now I'm going to... Now the Bible says that as soon as you receive it, the devil comes to try and take it. He comes immediately. And that's his goal, is to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's going to do that with every bit of the living word that you're going to receive, as best as he is able. If he thinks he has no opportunity, he might delay, or he might wait for a good opportunity, or the best opportunity he thinks will arrive for him, but he's absolutely going to come against it. So, uh... Now let's cut down to where Jesus is explaining what these mean in verses 18 through 23. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then comes the wicked one, and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. So he's explaining the first one. Some, some seed fell by the wayside in verse 3, and the birds came and, and devoured it. So he's saying, so Jesus is explaining, saying, these people, they heard the word, the seed actually went into their heart, but they didn't understand it at all, and they didn't seek wisdom or understanding or interpretation, which comes from God only, right? And they, it never took root, and the devil came and stole it away. How does that happen? Somebody goes to a dead church, and all they have is some teachings, some brain knowledge, and they go to... Um, uh, the university, and the university has uh, teaching evolution in everything, which makes them think, hey, the Bible is a lie. And many Christians from lukewarm backgrounds, uh, where they never really experienced the truth of God, the strength of God, they didn't have any roots, uh, their seed gets stolen away when they go to the university. So that's one example there. Okay. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that hears the word, and anon with joy receives it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but endureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. Okay, so this is somebody who they hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, they read it, or they even receive a dream. There are Arabs. I, I met a man, uh, a pastor in New York City. He had a member of his church who was from Saudi Arabia, and their entire village got saved when they all woke up one night at 4 a.m., and they had all had the same dream that Jesus Christ was the Messiah and the only way to heaven. So you can hear the word. The word is not just the gospel of salvation. People often equate this exactly and only with that. Long ago, someone told us that's what it means, and we've never really applied it fully to our entire relationship with the Word, which is Jesus. Jesus is the Word. So when the Holy Spirit speaks to us in prayer, in a dream, in an open or closed vision, that's the Word. Okay, so the Word can be stolen away here simply by somebody else. Uh, it never takes root. Da, 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 da. He endures for a while, right? So somebody hears it. You receive the Word, and you're like, wow, that's a great Word from God. Then you go to church, and the person says, Oh, that's just Old Testament. God doesn't speak to anybody anymore. That ended in chapter 22 of Revelation, and that's it. No one can add, so there's never again the voice of God, right? And you know what? Those words right there may have hurt you. That's all false. Just quench that right now. Push that apart, okay? That's not the truth 
at all. The truth is, God is a living God. He never changes. He spoke to people then, and He spoke to people now. In fact, the truth of the matter is that God speaks much more to people today under the new covenant with a closer connection than He ever did before. Okay. Uh, well, to more people, at least. Now, um, da -da -da -da. he also that received seed among the thorns is he that hears the word, and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches chokes the word, and he becomes unfruitful. So here is the, the, the people who received the seed on the craggy thorns. Their people, they receive some communication from God in a prayer, in a dream, whatever. They communicate with God, communicates with them, and they receive it, and with joy they, they have it. But then what happens is um, they get carried away in the world. Um, there have been times when I started to do something for the kingdom and suddenly I get eight new jobs and I'm working a couple days straight through just to complete these, these contracts. So what happens is the devil will try to uh, overcome your moving greater in godliness by giving you work, by uh, giving you troubles even. Uh, your car breaks down. Now you can't go to the conference. Um, the person who was... Uh, going to uh, the person who runs the house group suddenly became offended and there's an offense between you and that person. So it's just the cares of the world. It can be all kinds of things in the world, but it's just some kind of a distraction, something that replaces the time that you set aside to pray each morning. Something replaces that, oh man, I got this new goal, I gotta keep doing this. Oh, I joined this new uh, business, I gotta go to the meetings there, I can't go to the church group, right? So your relationship, your dedication to God becomes reduced in steps, subtly, 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 until it's almost nothing, right? How many people are watching this video today? You used to pray three times a week. You used to do all night prayer, and now you don't even know where your Bible is. You haven't read it in days, okay? The devil will send a phone call to distract you, but we're going to push through. But he that received the seed into the good ground is he that hears the word and understands it, which also bears fruit and brings forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Okay, an example. Okay, here's an example. I once was in a church, uh, it was worship time, and I received this vision. I saw myself out on the street preaching to some gang members. And uh, I saw that these people were listening to the word of God. But then the vision seemed to end and immediately it began again and what I saw was these gang members turned on me and began to punch me with their fists. And I thought, oh, that's really bad. Well, in this particular church, we would go out every Sunday night at 6 p.m. and we would pray for the city and for the leaders and for the churches in Modesto and then we would go a block and a half to where there was this nightclub and we would pray for the nightclub to be closed down because it was a place of all bad stuff, uh, date rape drugs and drug sales and all kinds of stuff. So we would always pray for this club to be closed. And it had closed three times and reopened three times under new management. But this particular night, uh, a band from Oakland was scheduled and they, they were a no-show. So all these gang members that followed this band were standing around the streets in downtown Modesto. And I said, well, I'm gonna go. And I remembered that part about the beatings and I said, be or not, I'm going. I'm not going to be subject to fear. I'm not going to be the slave of fear. So I went out and I began preaching to the first group and none of them wanted to hear it and they kind of went away. And I went to the next group and uh, one young guy had a bunch of questions, asked some questions, and it kind of went that same way with every group. One, in just one case, there were two guys wanted to hear it, had a lot of questions. But it was about 30, 40 minutes I got to uh, preach to these guys. And it was really encouraging for me. And no one beat me, no one yelled at me, no one was angry. They were respectful young men. Uh, they were polite. Some kind of smirked and went off, right? Because that was their attitude toward Jesus, toward the gospel. So uh, the devil tried to mix. He tried to steal that vision by quickly appending the true vision I'd received from the Holy Spirit to go and preach to those young men. And then he put in this lie, which was, if you do it, you'll receive a beating. So this is the man from Modesto reminding you as always to, to take what you've got and safeguard it. And you know, here's another thing is that the devil will even attack your mind so that your memory of what you were actually told will actually become altered. And I've seen it many times where I compared my old notes to what I was remembering in my mind and they're not the same. And this is much more important often with much more detailed information and sometimes with different information which uh, and requires a different conclusion. So uh, one thing you can do is 
You can have like a little recorder. Uh, you can get one of these. these. These are pretty cheap. You can get them at the CVS or anywhere. I bought this one 15 years ago at Radio Shack. It still works. Um, I have a better one now, uh, an Olympus. This thing can come apart and you can plug it into the back of your uh, computer so that you can easily transcribe uh, the information for archiving. Um, nowadays you can get an iPad and um, there's a, an app you can get called Dragon Dictation very easy to use and that will record and also convert to text uh, doesn't work for dreaming though dreaming uh, notes dictation is really horrible and uh, it doesn't translate the grogginess very well so this is the man from Modesto reminding you as always to pray or be defeated